I'm speechless. Totally speechless. That was a hell of a way to end the wartime shorts time period. And I don't mean that as a cuss word. Uh, it truly was hellish. It was scary. It was intense. <laughs> Definitely surprising for late 1940s Disney. I liked it, I think. But I still have a lump in my throat. I guess let's just jump right in. This is the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Credits roll and we hear generic 50s opening music. Now I have a legitimate question about this. A lot of TV shows and movies from the late 40s, early 50s had these kinds of openings with this similar style of music. Why? I could write this music. It kind of seems like anybody could because basically they are just singing the title to whatever kind of tune they can come up with. See, I'll do it for you right now. My name is Trent. I'm not your normal guy. See? We go to Toad Hall and meet our cast of animals. Mr. Toad is about to lose his giant mansion and he has to sell his cart and horse in order to make ends meet, but he loves his possessions and will not get rid of them even to save his house. He then sees a horseless carriage and decides on the spot that he has to buy one. He becomes immediately beyond obsessed by it. So his friends decide to put him in one of those bedrooms that only locks from the outside. Speaking of which, I need to talk to Disney's contractors. They're making their doors wrong. But he escapes and is immediately thrown into jail, presumably because he stole a car. Our main cast of characters really heavily discriminates against weasels. And let's just stop here. I'm not sure that this was specifically supposed to represent anything other than the difference between gangsters and normal people, but it says something pretty strong about the way our culture was at the time, that it seems so normal at the time to completely otherize an entire group of, well, animals. Today we don't do this as frequently, at least not in animation. They tell the judge what happened via the medium of poetry. I'm sure Judge Judy would react incredibly well to that. Grow up! That's all. <laughs> It's revealed that he tried to sell the barkeep a stolen car. Toad decides to mend his ways until his friend comes to break him out of jail no less than 30 seconds later. And by this point, I really am thoroughly invested, which makes this the worst part of the movie. Lockheads. How does he get out of the water? How? 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 You cannot just shrug that off. That frog was going to drown. Afraid of the police? <laughs> Great. Now I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Who keeps the deed to a mansion on them? Shouldn't that be in the lockbox in your closet? And with that, Trent had the horrifying realization that he was now an adult. Magical knives that disappear in the next frame are thrown at Mr. Toad. This movie is made up of two different stories, and we connect those two stories simply by talking about the books that the narrator has in his library, which I think is a really genius way to do it. Then, as the Ichabod story starts, we get a long grouping of narrator-based exposition. It was late one drowsy autumn afternoon when this strange figure first approached the tranquil little village of Sleepy Hollow. Is this whole movie going to be narration? Ichabod is a total, unapologetic gold digger. I am so not rooting for our main character. Come on, Brom Bones! But poor Katrina is clearly just a prize to be won. Maybe someday there will be a Disney woman who has a motivation of her own. I am not a prize to be won! And Ichabod is also quite the suck-up to the townspeople, especially the ladies. But... He's clearly very shady. What a prize. I hate this character. Come on! I like this storyline, but that's why I want to see where it actually goes. 
You spend so much time fighting for a chick that neither of you deserves that I know nothing about you. And when I know nothing about you, I don't care what happens to you. And if I don't care what happens to you, then I definitely don't care to see the two of you comparing how big your appendages are against each other. This appendage wagging has to stop. Brom Bones tells a scary story, and then, for some reason, Ichabod ends up in a dark forest. Is it just a thing that all Disney characters have to be afraid of trees? If I took a tree branch into Disney World and chased the Disney character around with it, could I get them to run around the park like a wild banshee? Because from what I've seen of these movies, if Disney cares at all about character integrity, that should definitely work. Oh. His nose just went into that horse's appendage for a horrifying amount of time. Not for kids. Yeah! Oh! This isn't a kid's movie. This is a horror movie. Oh, crap. So freaking intense. Not for kids for real this time. This is a horror flick. On the lighter side, though, he clotheslines himself twice on the same tree and I laughed which was a good respite from thinking about my soiled pants by the end the storyline really doesn't even resolve you don't really know what happened it was decided, a shattered pumpkin. but there was no trace of the schoolmaster even the narrator knows how scary this scene is man I'm getting out of here storyline with the exception of a couple scenes of men fighting over their prize, I was genuinely, constantly interested. I think this movie held my interest better than any of the former Disney movies that I've reviewed so far. Because of that, I have to give this movie number one for storyline. Music. The music in this is kind of lackluster. It's used well, and there are a couple instances of verse and rhyme being used effectively also, but it's nothing too special. It receives 8th place out of 11. Animation. This whole movie has its own style and art to it. The backgrounds have a similar type of style, but each movie is distinct from the other. The foreground characters are all just a little bit different, and Ichabod's foreground animation is particularly distinct. The mixture of both the foreground and the background together is beautiful also. I really fell in love with the way this movie looks. I give it second place out of 11 for animation. Character. The character development in this movie is not huge by any means, but you do learn about the characters. They are mostly developed through narration, so I give this movie fifth place out of 11 for character development this week. Technology. This movie barely uses any technology, but there is one scene of multiplane use and it is pretty breathtaking. Other than that, it's pretty standard technology for animation. This movie receives 9th place out of 11 for technology. Overall, this movie is really good, but its placings for each category are wildly disparate. This was a movie I will definitely want to watch again, especially around Halloween. I just may make sure that my daughter is a bit older before we watch it as a family. I'm actually pretty enthralled with the way this animation builds to a final large scare. And this movie shows what Walt Disney the company was capable of doing with animation. Even though Walt Disney the person kind of backed himself into a corner with his Disney brand. Overall, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad receives 5th place out of 11. If you haven't seen this movie, I definitely recommend that you go check it out. You may definitely enjoy its humor and even its intensity. I wouldn't show it to any really small kids, but it's not that scary. It just surprised me because I was not expecting a movie from the late 1940s from Disney Animation to be something that was as intense as this was. I would say it was definitely a pleasant surprise. My next review is Cinderella, so please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss the classics of the Silver Age. Now, I'm gonna go change my pants. Man, that crap was intense.